For another project using napkins, this is what my husband made for me. Uh, we had a lot of this scrap lumber left over from when we built my son and daughter-in-law cabinetry. Um, well, actually bookshelves. Anyway, we had a lot of this left over. And because the napkins that I have and will be using are five inch squares, I asked him to make seven inch squares and then just to nip off the corner to give the illusion of a pumpkin and we'll put the stem in it again, just like the other ones. Um, and I will paint the back eventually. I started out painting it white and then I had a little bit of another idea. I want some kind of texture or, but not really a texture because the napkin would pick up the texture, but I want something different looking behind it. Now the thing is about applying a napkin to anything, you really want to use a white background. If you think about it, a napkin, when you separate the plies, they're white. And that's what's going to make the front design of the napkin show up the best. So, I will be going over this with white as the top layer. But what I've done is I have uh, painted on one coat of uh, Dixie Bell Gravel Road. And I don't care that it's not totally solid because that part's not gonna matter. What I'm gonna do now is create a crackle finish. Now, where do you get crackle? Well. I've got this one that's folk art crackle medium that uh, came from Michaels and it's okay. Um, but I also have Dixie Bell's crackle. So I like it better. I'm going to use it. And by the way, see how easily that lid came off? Well, the reason is because after I used it the last time, I put Vaseline all the way around the edge. That's a helpful tip on keeping your crackle jar where you can open it because it will um, eventually kind of seal shut. The general rule with crackle is that you really need to stir it thoroughly before you start applying it. And that's one of the reasons I wasn't that crazy about this crackle because look, see all that that's stuck at the bottom? You, you hardly can get that loose. See how it's starting to come down now? So I like something I can get my hands on and really mix it well. Okay, now I'm going to put my crackle on the sides too. So I will do that first before I go to the front. You don't want to thin the crackle either with water. It's kind of a thick substance. It's kind of like painting on a glue. Generally the rule is the thicker you go, <clears throat> the more product, the bigger the cracks. But if you go too thick, it's gonna take forever to dry. So I don't want real huge cracks anyway. Wherever you don't put the crackle, you're not gonna have cracks. All right, we need to thoroughly let this dry before we can do the next step. You wanna let the Dixie Bell crackle dry overnight. I don't know if you can see what it looks like. I applied a pretty thick coat but see how it kind of is, it, it looks like it's starting to bead up and you'll think, oh my, is it not working? 
but that's because I applied such a thick layer of it. Now, it's really recommended to use like a cheap chip brush with the crackle and then throw it away because you really don't want to wash out your good brushes and put the crackle down your drain because it's kind of like a glue. So, uh, I didn't use a chip brush, but I washed my brush outside with some soap and the water hose. So the next step after we've let it dry 24 hours is going to be to apply some paint. Now, there are two things you need to remember when applying your top paint on crackle. Number one, it needs to be a thick coat. Number two, you need to brush in the same direction. And there's a number three, do not overwork it. If you overwork it, you will reactivate the crackle and it just won't work. So, I'm going to do my side edges first. And by the way, I had to do a little bit of sanding and picking off with my hands some of that quote unquote glue crackle that had, because it was laying on a flat surface, I had it kind of stuck to my paper and I had to kind of pick and chip at it, which is another reason why I like to wait until after this step to paint the backs of my boards, or you can wait until the very end. Sometimes it's hard to remember not to go the opposite direction but you just have to remind yourself all one direction. When you apply your crackle, as I said, you can apply it thick or thin in some areas. You can do a cross hatch. All right, that's all that I'm going to do in terms of working my brush across it. I got a lot of paint on here. but it's still, I have to load my brush twice. But you see, I'm not going back and forth, back and forth. Now, if that's hard for you to remember, let me show you another tool you can use. It is this, it's, um, well, Dixie Bell makes one like it also, but this happens to be the one I have from Heritage Traditions Paint. It's a sponge, it's kind of cut so that you can have a handle and it fits right over the paint jug. And it loads a lot of paint. So I can use it. To offload the paint as well. On these small projects, I don't like it as well, but if you were doing like a big, a big board or furniture or something like that, it would be an option. All right, let me show you a couple of them that I have already done the paint on and they're still drying. This is the first one. You see the beautiful crackle? So, I'm gonna let this dry, then I'll sand my edges on the back side and paint my backs, and we'll come back and do the fun technique, a new technique of decoupaging with tissue paper a different way. I'm gonna show you a little different technique for applying um, a napkin to a piece of wood. And I have already separated my napkin. Let me find it. So 
You see, I've already separated my napkin. Now, because of the design of this napkin and it you know, kind of has a little border on it, I very carefully trimmed the napkin with scissors. And it's possible that these edges may tear, and if they do, I can add some molding or something once I get it attached. Here is a different method. If this is too hard for you, um, just go back to applying your Mod Podge, put your napkin down, and put the Mod Podge on top. <clears throat> but I just wanted to show this to you because it's, it's really a wrinkle-free method. You just have to really practice it for a while. So, I've got my napkin. I'm laying it good side down on a piece of plastic, which is just, you know, one of those, what do you call them? Scrapbook binder page, a scrapbook cover page. And I'm going to pour a little bit of water onto my napkin. I'm kind of holding the bottom of it with my hand in case the edges wanted to try to fold over or anything. You want enough water on there that basically the it's kind of floating. But once you get it all wet, and I'm gonna kind of pool it in the middle and pour off my water. Milky water, actually. All right, now I'm gonna use my hands and very gently kind of stretch and straighten out the napkin. Now this was just a two-ply napkin, which the quality of a two-ply is usually not the same as a three-ply. Three-ply is usually better, but you have to take off two layers instead of just one. Now I'm using a very light hand with a soft brush. Remember, these napkins are fragile. But I'm just smoothing out, get out any wrinkles, bubbles that are under the napkin. This method works really well if you want to make coasters because you get a nice smooth finish without bubbles. I'm nice seeing a bubble. Okay, now I'm gonna take my little shop towel and very gently pat, taking out some of this water. Okay. Now we're gonna put our board down, make sure I got it right side up. And I can position this. One of the reasons I like this method is because if I don't have it exactly right, see, I can pick it right back up because until I start trying to adhere the napkin to the, um, the base, whatever I'm applying it to, it's gonna stay on this plastic. You can't do that if you use Mod Podge. Once you put it down, it's down. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a junk card and gently, very gently, press that out. 
And here comes the hard part, getting the plastic off of the napkin. This is where you may have trouble with tearing. What I do is start at one corner using a wet brush. I just gently try to grab the edge of that napkin to get it to lay down and kind of hold my brush on it. Oops, and I tore it. This corner, of course, I'm not happy with, and I could just take it off and start all over, but I can put something down here to hide that easily enough, and it'll probably end up making it cuter to have it, something extra on it. So now we need to glue it down. I am going to use Mod Podge to do that because Matt, Matt Mod Podge because I don't have a sealer up here that down in the basement. Again, you got to be super gentle. But even while it's wet, you want to go ahead and apply the Mod Podge to glue it down. Wrinkles will probably come back up while you're applying your Mod Podge. But as it dries, they will go back out. I'm using extremely light hand here. I mean, I'm even barely holding on with, to the brush. Okay, we'll let this dry and come back. We'll show you the next and last step. Well, pause here. Apparently, I did not film aging these little pumpkin blocks, but all I did was take some Waverly antique wax and just brushed over it and used a shop towel to kind of soften it and take off the amount that I wanted to take off and then around the napkin edges I went a little heavier with the antique wax and kind of used my finger and kind of rubbed it in now we'll move on to finish up these little pumpkin blocks I need to do a couple of things first of all it's going to need a stem but it's also well like this one for example where I tore my napkin I need to cover that up so Here's what I'm using. These tiny little acorns. Isn't that adorable? I used IOD clay. Let me grab. This is the mold, the fleur-de-lis mold that is retired. If you like this, you better Google and see if anybody still has this mold out there. That's the thing about IOD is they do retire their stuff over kind of a short period of time. But right here are the baby acorns and there are also some bigger ones. But for these size pieces, I felt like the smaller ones would look better and not overpower. So. What I've done first with them, on the bottom part, I painted a metallic copper. 
I have so many products downstairs from my faux biz days when I had my retail store and taught classes and such. But this was one I had down there, Add a Color. I'm not even sure that company's still in business anymore. But this is their metal series in copper. And guys, this thing is, let's see, 11 years old. <laughs> still in great shape. So on the bottom, I painted with that, it's still a little tacky. But I think for the top, I have uh, some gilding wax in bronze. This is Dixie Belle. And I got this idea off of uh, a live on the IOD page. A girl um, from, a stockist from Florida was using these and used this method. Uh, she used the copper gilding wax, but I didn't have any, so I used my copper paint that I had. I'll try to move my hand so you can see. But basically, I'm just going to use my finger. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna use a little brush because the copper's still wet and I got some on there and I didn't really want to. This clay isn't dry either. Now this gilding wax is oil based, so keep that in mind when you have cleanup. And I think I'm going to add some of this on top of it too. This is the antiquing Waverly, it's just cheap, Waverly um, antiquing wax you can get at Walmart. My brush just a little bit wet. Let's go a little darker. I've lost a little bit of my raised design here by filling that in. So, maybe I could add a little something something to that. Hang on, I gotta go downstairs. I also have the gilding wax in gold. So, and gold just makes everything pop. Oh yeah, isn't that cute? I like that. That totally brings out the detail of the mold. Another thing I like about this gold Gilding Wax by Dixie Bell is it's not brash. It's kind of a, a soft, warm gold color. Okay. I'm gonna leave this open because I'm gonna use it for something else. For the tops of these stems, I thought I really would like to use something different that I haven't used before. And when we garden every year, we have a large garden. That's kind of why our YouTube <laughs> channel started because we have so many gardening videos on the unusual way, usual methods we use. But anyway, when I grow okra, I always at the tail end of the season, 
leave some of the okra on the actual plant to dry out and dry out they do. Isn't that cute? I thought it would make a really unusual and different stem. So, before I glue that in, to tie in our acorn a little bit, I'm going to add just a touch Just a touch of this gold gilding wax on my okra pods. And now I will hot glue my okra, my Randy drilled these holes really deeply because he thought I was going to use sticks. So I'm basically just having to fill up that hole with hot glue. He didn't center this hole, but honestly, I think it looks cute like that. Plus I used the okra stem going that way. So from a distance, it looks centered. I'm gonna add just a touch of glue around the outside. And add some raffia. to glue on my little acorn. Now, <clears throat> on this one, I'm going to glue it here. But I don't want all four to be glued in the same spot. So I'm thinking I'll glue this one up here in that corner. Top bond quick and thick on the back. And then let it dry. What do y'all think? And voila, an accident tearing the tissue turned into a happy accident because it's much cuter with that.